Now that we have our primary sequential logic storage device, we need to look at the timing considerations when using it. So we have a D flip-flop, and this device is edge sensitive to a clock, which comes in on the input that has this little greater than sign. And the way that this behaves is that the data, which comes in on the D input, is going to be latched or stored whenever you get a rising edge of a clock. <clears throat> and it will appear on Q, and then there's a Q is the output, and then of course you have QN, which is the inversion of the output. So if you think about some of the things that we need to consider, uh, let's just draw out a timing diagram, and let's put the uh, clock right here. And let's say we come along and we have a rising edge there, and then we have rising edge there, and since this is a rising edge device, I typically draw, <coughs> typically draw an arrow on it just to indicate that we ha that's where the triggering event is. So now if I came along and I had data, one of the things that could potentially happen is that what would the device do if my data came along and it changed at the exact instant <coughs> that the clock changed? So you look at that, the clock came in and you said, well, what's Q going to do? What is Q going to be updated with? So let's say that Q was, was at a zero to begin with. And you say, if the clock occurred right here, <coughs> will Q be a zero or a one? So while well, you think about it, it's like, well, it happened, the clock was right here. It could have been, it could have stayed at a zero. But then again, the transition was very close, so it could have kind of happened right here. So it could have actually stored the one. So you don't really know what it's going to do. And this is the major timing consideration that we have to, to consider when we use D flip-flops. We can't have the data transition too close to the clock or else the D flip-flop will not know what to update Q with. And in fact, what happens is that if it does occur too close, the device will go metastable. So there are two specifications that dictate how how close to the clock edge that the data can actually transition. And the first one is going to be called the setup time. So I'll call it T setup. So we're going to have T setup. And that's the same as just saying TS. And the setup time is the amount of time before the clock edge, so before the clock edge, that the data has to be stable. So if I was going to transition this, this data in this example to a 1, I would have had to have done it at least one setup time before the clock. And then the second one that we have is the hold time. So I'll call that TH. And the hold time is also called TH. It's the amount of time after the clock edge that you need to hold the data before you can transition again. So for example, in, in this example, if I was going to transition to a 1 here, and I came along, and then I wanted that 1 to stay, I couldn't take it away right. I couldn't take it away too quick. So I would have to keep it all the way until the hold time specifications met, then I could take it away. So if I redrew my data, it would look like this. I'll shrink it down. It would have to change no closer to the clock edge than here, and then it would have to stay there at least one T-hold longer than the clock edge, or than when the rising edge occurred. Okay, so those are the, the setup and hold. So a lot of times what you'll see, and if you did that, then of course the Q would be updated up you know, appropriately. A lot of times what you'll see is when you draw kind of the, the graphic of this, you'll say the data, the data is valid here, and we'll kind of just say it's valid right here, or excuse me, it's changing right here, so the data's changing right here, and then around the clock edge, what you'll say is you say, okay, it has to be valid right here, and then it can start changing again. So this va data valid window that sits right here is around the clock, and it's made up, it's comprised of the setup and the hold specifications of the D flip-flop. <coughs> okay, so those are the two main ones. And what happens is that if you change within there, if you change or transition within the setup and the hold window, the output will go metastable. You have no idea where it's going to go. Now, Metastability, remember in the cross-coupled inverter pair, uh, you 
it's going to go to a, a final state. It's going to go to one of its final states. So ultimately, Q will go to a 0 and a 1, and Qn will go to the opposite. However, you don't know where it's going to go. And if you think about what's in a D flip-flop, there's a whole lot of gates. There's a big cascade of gates. There's two D latches in there with a couple inverters. And then the D latches are made up of SR latches with enables. So there's a long chain of basic gates that need to propagate their values through. So if you go metastable on the first stage, uh, the behavior becomes very complicated because you have a lot of devices going metastable. So what ends up happening is that the output Q <coughs> will go, I'll draw it in red, it will go metastable if you transition within here. So let's say that now we're going we're gonna to violate the setup and hold window, so I will transition right at the same time that the, that the clock occurred. And <coughs> what will happen is that Q, you don't know where it's going to go. It might go to a 1, it might go to a 0, it actually might go to a value somewhere in the middle of a 1 and a 0, or it may toggle uncontrollably. So you have no idea what's going to happen here. The only thing you do know is that it's gone metastable. The final value that it goes to, it'll either be a 0 or a 1. Uh, it'll ultimately get there. But during this time, you cannot guarantee what's going to be on the output. And this right here is actually a specification that you can measure on a D flip-flop. And they give it the, uh, the spec T metastability, or T meta for short. So it's actually a, a deterministic value. And, and it's you know, considerably longer compared to like the set of and hold because the output just goes, goes crazy and then it'll ultimately settle. But that you can specify this so that if you ever did go metastable, you know you'd have to wait for a certain amount of time before you could say, okay, now I'm, I'm out of the metastability region and I can start over again. Remember though, very important, when you come out of metastability, you have no idea what the output's gonna be. <clears throat> it's gonna be a one or a zero, but you don't know which one it went to. So you have setup and hold, if you violate the setup and hold, meaning that you change the data too close to the clock edge, setup is you change it too, too close before the clock edge, hold is you change it too close after the clock edge, you will violate these specifications and you will go metastable. If you do go metastable, there's a deterministic amount of time that you will remain metastable and then you will come out into an unknown state. So the final specification, that, you know, there's a lot of specifications with the D flip-flops because <clears throat> we'll talk about them, we'll talk about some more of them. Uh, but the setup hold and then metastability. And then there's one last one that's really a primary. So if you think about, let's, let's redraw just to get a clean one. Let's, let's say that the clock came in and you had a rising edge of a clock. And let's say that data was here and it transitioned and you you uh, met the setup time. So you absolutely met setup and you absolutely met hold. And then Q happened to be at a zero. So it's at a zero right here. And at this moment in time, the edge occurs and Q is gonna go to a one. <clears throat> so Q was, is gonna transition to a one because it's gonna latch the value of D and it's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna store that on Q and that's the operation and I'll hold it till the next rising edge clock. Well, what happens is that this device doesn't update Q instantaneously. There's actually a delay through it. And you can think about the, the construct of what's inside of this. It's D latches and SR latches with enable. There's a lot of basic gates in there. So it doesn't, can't propagate D instantaneously to Q. So there is actually propagation delay uh, between the time you get a clock and the time you actually see the uh, see the final output on Q. And this right here, sometimes you'll see it called T propagation delay, because it really is a propagation delay. But a, a more common term that's used uh, in industry is we call it the clock to Q. So this is going to be the clock to Q delay. And where, do, where does this come from? Well, it means the triggering edge of the clock to when the Q update was, or the Q output was updated. So we call this T clock to Q. And that just represents from the time the edge hit, the triggering edge, to the moment that the output was actually updated. So that's T clock to Q. So these are the four primary, four primary uh, uh, specifications. And then they break them down. If you look at a data sheet of a D flip-flop, you'll see things like they'll specify T clock to Q for 
when it transitions from a zero to a one, and then there'll be ones where T clock to Q when it transitions from a high to a low. There'll be different T clock to Qs for QN, and then there'll be uh, specifications on high and low for both of them. So there's a host of them, but the primary four specifications are going to be your setup, your hold, and then your T clock to Q and your metastability. So those are things that you have to consider when you are designing sequential logic.